Recently, someone asked in the comments about uh, menus and if it's possible to create a menu that pops up from the bottom of the screen. As you can see, it really is not possible. And so, rather than that, I thought we'd take a look at how to create your own custom menu system. It doesn't exactly replace menus, although you could certainly program it to if you wanted to. It's a way that you can show and hide entire containers on the screen by either using a switches object or by using custom buttons. First, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. With custom buttons, you can place the buttons anywhere on the layout that you want. They don't all have to be together. For example, we can move these buttons over here. The disadvantage of custom buttons is that you have to handle automatically hiding other menus. In other words, you have to program them to be essentially radio buttons. On the other hand, the switches object handles that for you. You can easily use the radio option in order to force only one switch to be selected at a time. The disadvantages are that obviously you can't place the menu buttons themselves anywhere you want. They all have to be together as part of a switches object. And you also need one additional button to serve as the off button because when you're in radio mode, you can't actually fully deselect. There always has to be at least one selection. And so then that first switch just becomes your off switch. Now let's look and see how we can actually show and hide containers. I've already set up menus 1, 2, and 3 as examples, so let's create menu 4. First start out by dragging out a container. We're going to create a script inside of that container just called visibility. You can call it anything you like. Execution mode, we're going to set on expression. And so what do we want? We want to do something when that fourth button is pressed. Let's double check the name of the button. Menu for button. All right. So inside of our script, we'll say on expression menu for button dot x. To control visibility, you can use the show function. The show function takes two parameters, the name of the object to show, and then either a 1 for it to be visible or a 0 for it to be hidden. In this case, we want to make our new container object visible or hidden. Let's double check the name of the container, simply called container. All right, so we can type container, and then what we want to do is use this value of the menu for button.x itself as the switch to either hide or show the container. So we'll write menu for button.x, close parentheses and semicolon. Now if we test out our button, we can see that when we turn the button on, the container is visible and when we turn it off, the container gets hidden. The next piece of the puzzle we said was to configure these buttons to act like radio buttons so that when we click one, the others are automatically deselected. That's done through a script that's been added to each button hide other menus. So it's very simple. It executes on expression x and it simply sets the x value of all the other buttons to be 0. Button 2, button 3, and button 4. If we look at menu 2 script, it's going to be the same thing except that it's going to set menus 1, 3, and 4 to be 0. So that's how that's accomplished. One trick that you have to use though when doing this is you have to set the execution mode to this second option right here the value goes from zero to positive. You can experiment without setting it to that. You can experiment just setting it to any, but you'll notice that because changing from a one to a zero is also a trigger, you wind up with some cycles of triggers that go on between the buttons and they try to enable and disable each other when you really don't want them to. Now let's see how to accomplish the same thing using switches. Once again, I've created menus one, two, and three as examples. So let's use menu four. I'll drag a new container onto the screen once again, and again, create a visibility script. This time, we're going to set on expression, but we want this to trigger whenever the switches object.x changes at all. This means we want the script to trigger whether we're clicking this menu for switch or whether we're clicking any other switch. So we'll start by typing switches.x, and now this time our container is called container2. So we'll use the show function, container2, but we only want this container to be visible when this menu 4 button is pressed. That would be index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we need to index into that switches.x variable into index 4. This makes sense, right? Because when this particular switch is selected, switches.x index 4 is going to be 1. And when another switch is selected, it's going to be zero. Let's click a few other switches to see if it works. 
and there we go. You'll notice that if we click on any of these other containers, the same script entered there, visibility, triggering on switches.x, but in this case, of course, we're relying on index 3 of the switches.x variable in order to be hidden or visible. The reason the off button works to turn all the menus off is because when you select off, all of the menus are checking to see if their particular index is 1. If it's 1, it's setting itself to be visible. If it's 0, it's setting itself to be hidden. Well, when you click the off button, that's index 0. And none of our container objects are looking at index 0 in order to set themselves as visible. Now let's talk about one way you could create submenus if you'd like to. Notice that menus 2 and 3 have submenus available, and if I click the button, we get another submenu show up on the side. Also notice that when I switch between menus, if I have enabled a submenu, that submenu stays enabled. Now that's obviously something you could decide to do or not to do, but either way I'll show you how it works. So to start out with, let's talk about how this container actually works. Menu 2 is, in reality, a container that's normally set to transparent. This allows us to add controls into this container which aren't currently visible. If we just resize it, we'll see that there's another container within this Menu 2 master container. So what you're seeing is Menu 2 is actually a container within a container. If I turn off transparency, you can see it on the screen as well. And so what the submenu button is doing is it's actually just resizing this master container so that submenu 2 becomes visible. But when you turn the submenu button off, it resizes back to its original size. I'll show you how that works now. So inside of this submenu button, I've got one script called submenu. This submenu triggers whenever you've clicked the button, so x is the expression mode. For simplicity, I've gone ahead and created two variables in here so we can easily adjust our open width and our closed width. If we take a look at the inspector here, we can see that our closed width is 421. And so we've set closed width to 421. Here, open width is 801. So that's the size it'll be when it gets resized. Now, I wanted to make this menu so that if I decide to move it, say, up here instead of being down here, that the script relies on its current location, x and y location. And so that's why here you'll see that I've created two variables, x and y location, and it just gets the rect attribute from the menu2 container, which is our master container right here, menu2 container. It just gets that rect variable and then extracts, in this case, the x, and then in this case, the y variable out of that. Let me just resize this a little bit here. All right, so if we've just enabled the switch, that means that x is going to be equal to 1. So in that case, we want to change the rect variable to be the open width. So we'll set its x and y locations, and then we'll set its width as open width, and then its height as 345. Conversely, if x is 0, which means we've turned off the submenu switch, then we're going to set it to the closed width, which again we've defined right here. So you can see that if we turn this off and then go back to menu 2, it's still in the same location because it's relying on wherever we've placed it on the screen to be where we want it to be located. Menu 1, you'll see, is back where it was originally. Same with menu 3. Note that if you wanted to, you could actually spawn additional containers using submenus rather than relying on this resize technique. You could have it make a container that is essentially like this container, you know, one that overlaps the current interface. So there are the tools for creating custom menus. You can put any controls in here that you like to, and you can position this in any part of the screen and have it trigger from either a custom button or a switch. Thanks for watching.